Hello everyone, it's Chris from McCraig here and I'm back with another video. This time uh, I'm looking at the SP404 Mark II and I'm going to show you some MIDI magic that you can do to turn this into like an effects powerhouse. Um, it enables you to access all sorts of things that's hidden in menus using MIDI, right? Have it all right at your fingertips. So um, I'm using MIDI Surf, right? As this, this, this free browser-based MIDI controller that I made. Uh, you can use it just now there's a link in the description and, and in particular it will load up this preset that's for the 404 Mark II and uh, you can you can you know do what I'm showing you in this video. I'm going to give you a little demo of this and how it works in a second and what we're actually controlling. Then at the end of the video I'm going to show you how to make your own custom controller right and how you go about finding out what messy MIDI message you need to send to control various different things on the device right. So just to get to start with I'm in the, the SP404 Mark II. This is it's a, it's a sampler, a, a sequencer, and uh, an effects machine, and you can resample over the top and, and chop up and change all of your, your samples of sim. I'm in one of the default projects, and I'm uh, in the pattern mode. So these are patterns of samples playing over and over again. You can record these yourself. So it's just going to go around in a loop just to show you the different effects. And there's lots of effects you can add to this, and you can resample again, for example. So we can add a filter or delay, for example, or an isolator, if we just want to get a particular frequency band of the sound. A, a DJ looper. Um, and then there's actually this multi-effects. This is set up to a stopper at the moment, but it, there's actually tons of different effects. Right. And actually all of this is controllable with MIDI, not just for the first effects bus, because there's actually four effects buses, actually five, including the input effects bus as well. Now you can only control one of them at a time when it's active, but using MIDI, you can control any of them at any time, right? And have them live and interactive and really, you know, really powerful for, for performance. So I'm gonna show you how to do that here. So I've got this controller, it's set up to work on one by default, and we can use it to control the active we can use it to control the active effect on bus one here. So we've got the off button, which will turn it off completely. Filter and drive, resonance, delay, isolator, DJ looper, scatter. And then we can also pick another one that's inside that multi effects menu, stopper, right? You can pick any of them that's inside that menu if you send the right MIDI message. And like I said, I'll show you how to set up your own one later on in the video. We can also control the parameters associated with them, right? So again, if we go back here, um, we can control the first page of parameters I've got set up with these faders. Some of them have two pages, but usually the second one, you don't want to change that much. Um, but these are the ones that are most important. So again. You know, so you get the idea. You can control these things directly like this. Now, and turn them off again so you can control everything it's just right at your fingertips right and you can control all of the different the, the different parameters you can also do it for the different effects bus so if you've opened this link that's in the description to get this one here the th first thing you want to do is and let me let me zoom in here hopefully let you see a bit better um let's zoom in here and uh, we'll open this menu at the top you want to, first of all, you connect it with a USB Type-C cable to the USB Type-C port. I'm using a phone, but it works on anything that has a browser, a, a Chrome-based browser. Um, so you connect it up to the device. If you click the connections menu, you'll see SB404 Mark II, and uh, you'll be able to, this means you'll be able to send and receive MIDI information. You've, you'll have you loaded and imported this page if you went through that link. If you click save, you'll be able to use it, um, reload it later on if you, manage, if you deleted it, for example. So we can click save and, and save that page. And then if you want to make it again or make a copy of it, we can do the edit button here. We go along to this plus and we click load, right? And we click this page that we're wanting and we set the channel. We can, can set the channel in this case. Now I've used channel one and that call, controls effects bus one, but we could set channel two and then make a copy which has effects bus two. Now, if I go to edit this, let's edit its name so that we can tell the difference more easily. Um, this one it controls effects bus too. Uh, let's close this menu so we can see a bit more clearly what's going on. So if I go in here, you, you'll be able to see um, 
the, there's the resonator, right? Or whatever it is that we're picking. If we go to number two, we can control that one with the second page. Now, they don't need to be different pages, right? Um, oh, uh, let me zoom back out again, just so that you could definitely see that. Um, so yeah, just again, we're controlling page one, uh, uh, sorry, bus one and bus two. And you can do this with three or four as well. Use it by sending it to channel three or four or the input one, you can send it to channel five, right? So it's, it, you know, really powerful. You've got all this at your fingertips, right? Wait, what are we on? So let's turn these off. And uh, these are actually in series with one another. We've got it set up. By default, this is the way it is. So let's put a resonator on one. Right. And we can, again, we can see that, what I was doing. And then we can go into number two and let's set up scatter. And get some really cool and weird effects. So, you know, you can you can control this. And like I said, you can do three and four as well, or the input one too. So that is that's how you can use this to control this. And you can customize it and change it. And I'll like I said, and I'll show you in a little second how you can make your, your own custom controller. Now, um, if if you're you just want to use it, then that's great. Thanks very much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. And uh, if you, you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. If you want to support the development of MediSurf, you can give a donation on, on Coffee or Patreon and the links are in dis the description, but there's no obligation. It's free to use. You can go away and use it just now. Um, so for those of you who want to see how to make uh, uh, your own sort of custom MIDI controller, let's uh, let's first of all, take a look here. Um, you'll need information about the MIDI implementation for the SP404, and that's what it works the same for any device, right? You need to know what MIDI messages to send. So if you search for, SP404 Mark II reference manual, you'll get to um, a link and you'll be able to open it as a PDF or as HTML, which is this, this one here. If you go all the way down to Appendix and then click MIDI implementation chart, it'll bring you to this table here. And it tells you the information about MIDI send and receive. Now it is, it's a bit cryptic, this table, to be honest. Um, it, it's, it's not that easy to interpret, but the part that we're interested in is down here, which tells us about the effects buses and the MIDI that can get sent to them. The MIDI channel that you can send to them, you can send one, two, three, four, or five, which corresponds to the four basic um, MIDI buses, the, sorry, the four effects buses, the two sort of interactive ones that you can get using this effects bus button here, um, and the input one, which you can get by connecting up um, a, a guitar or a microphone down at the bottom here. And with this one, you can actually get a, a vocoder style effect with, on a microphone and you can control that, the, the key that, that that's in with, with a MIDI controller. Really, really cool, but I'll, I'll save that for a different video. The next thing is down here, controller change numbers and corresponding EFX. Um, you can, uh, these are the different MIDI messages you need to send to control different elements, like turning it on and off, um, the EFX number, which is, this is selecting which effect it is that, that it's going to be applied to. And then the these ones correspond, control one, two, three, four, five, and six corresponds to um, these encoders up here and the two pages of them that there might be for some of them. Some of them have two pages, some of them don't. Um, but generally one, two, and three are the most important ones. And that's what I made for that one there. Now this, this here is very important. I don't know why it's not just all in one place. If you click on this here, it'll take you to this page. And this page tells you how, what the numbers are to select different effects. So let's, let's go and make our own little custom MIDI controller and you can, you can see how that's done. And um, yeah, and uh, um, um, we, can, we can refer to that table in a second and be able to make, uh, make our own. So we go to edit, we click this plus, we click new, and the page label, we're going to call it FX, call it whatever you like. Um, and then it's just blank, right? Not very interesting. If we press edit again, it'll open up this edit mode and we can change this space, which is just the blank space at the moment. Um, but we want to press edit twice, so it goes dark gray. And this means that it'll keep it active and we can keep on editing. Then we click column here. We want, we want to split up the space that we have. So I'm going to add two spaces to the column, which will make a column with two elements inside it like this, one, two. 
And we can turn this into a row for our feeders and a row for our buttons. I'm going to make a little simpler one compared to the one before, just for um, brevity. So let's do row and add one, two, three. And we're going to add three elements here. And we're going to use this to make our faders. At the moment, there's nothing in them, right? They're just spaces. But if we click on them, edit, and then click fader, then we can add the fader. Now, if we go back to our MIDI menu, what we want to control first of all, let's go here, sorry, our MIDI, MIDI document, um, we can see what we want to control here. We want to control these three parameters, right? And we need CC 16, 17, 18 on, let's say, channel one to control this one, right? So let's do that. Let's say, uh, okay, let me go back in and zoom in here. Great. Um, let's go to the label and let's say P1 is going to be our label. Let's make it blue. And uh, channel one, we'll get it sent to, um, but it could be two, three, four, five, like I said. CC number, we want CC number 16. If you refer back to that chart, 16 was control one. So we'll do 16 and we want a minimum value of zero and a max of 127. So that's the full range of the encoder. It doesn't need to be though. You could have like zero to 64, which is uh, zero to 50% so that you can't ever go beyond that. And that's actually very help helpful for the, the, the effect of the DJ looper because the speed goes from minus 100 where it's going backwards to plus 100. Maybe you only want it to go between zero and, and, uh, yeah, zero and a hundred, and you can do that by restricting the range of this here, right? Anyway, for the for for now, we can just click OK, and we'll we'll get this, we'll get this here, um, and it, this will correspond to. Let me see if I can move this a little bit over here. You can see a bit better what's going on. Um, but if we go into let's see remain, then you can see this is controlling parameter one, right? Good. So now uh, we'll double click this. We'll go fader, and we'll do P two. And then we'll change this to blue as well. Why not? And then we want number 17 this time because that corresponds to this encoder here. Hopefully you can see it. That's encoder number two. You can't see it, but um, the, the, the the third one along, uh, which is encoder two. Um, and then we will get this one, which is going to be uh, P3. We'll make it blue again. And uh, it's going to be CC number 18, which corresponds to the, the third uh, controller for the effects. So now um, if we have a look at that, we should be able to control all of these one, two, and three here, right? And off. Very nice. The next thing we want to do is let's make another row and we're going to put one, two, three, and this is just three buttons for changing the effects type here, right? You can obviously add many, many more if you want. You could do a column, you could do columns first and have multiple columns for this to separate it like I did in the last one and then change what they are, but we'll just do this for now. And we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to make a CC value. This will send one single CC message, right? Um, you can also do a command which can send multiple at one go. So you could change the effect type and ch change the encoder values in one go, which is pretty neat. Um, also a sequence where you press the same button over and over again, it'll send different messy, MIDI messages in a row. But we'll do the simpler one, which is CC value. Now, let's have a look again at our, our table. Um, if we go here, we're wanting to select the effect that's active and we go to that link there. Um, we can see that we need to send it to CC83 and the value of this CC message will correspond to the different active um, uh, effect. Um, and there's space for more to be assigned later on, which is cool. Um, then you've got three and four here and then the input one as well, including this vocoder. And like I said, I'm gonna make another video showing you how to use the whole coder with it, because it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so what we want is up here, it's message 83, and let's make start off by having an off, and that's zero. So let's go back to our controller here, and you can see, uh, let's say that it, we're gonna call this off, and we'll make this, that can be green, let's leave it as green. And it will be channel one again, because we're wanting it for channel one. And it's controller number 83. And we want it to be zero, which is corresponds to off, right? And let's just make sure that that works. We put on filter and drive and we press this. Oops, I need to, let's cancel into that. Turn off edit, then press this one. We can turn it off, right? Turn it off, good. So now maybe we want it to be, let's say the isolator. So let's do CC value, label is, say ISO, we'll leave it green again, 
uh, control number 83. And which CC number? Well, it starts off 0 for off. 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's do 4. Okay, but just refer to the table. And then we should be able to turn isolator on and off, right? And then this one, let's do um, let's do some the tape stop, which is a kind of uh, not tape stop, the tape loop, which is a nice or tape delay, which is a nice effect. If we look on this menu again, go down uh, tape echo. This one is nice. I like this one. So let's go and back here. So we want again another CC value, and we can do um, we can do let's just call it tab uh, green. And then controller number, we want 83, but this time we want 14, which corresponds to tape on and off. And again, we should be able to see this isolator on, and then it's putting some effects on. If you look at the effect, it's this tape delay here. So let's play that. And we can see the parameters here. Right, so so again, you can you can set this up, make your own custom controller that control anything that you like, all sorts of different things with this. So I think it's I think it's really powerful, and for the SP44 Mark II, it's just it opens up so many options, including like I said that vocoder being able to make that. It makes it really really fun to use, and I'll show you that in a different video. So hopefully you found that useful and interesting. Um, if you have any questions, please please ask in the comments. Um, it's like I said, MIDI Surf is free to use, but you can use any MIDI controller that you like. Uh, you can set it up if you can set it up to send particular messages. Um, yeah, and uh, you know if you find this useful, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, or you know if you want to support the development of MIDI Surf and the tutorials and other things that I make, then you can either send me a one-off donation to co through Coffee or, or through Patreon. It's down in the description. If you have any requests or things that you'd like to see. Um, or you need any advice for, for you know, setting up with a device that you love, then please uh, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.